Houston Rockets fans, we're back this time. Veterans. Showing love to the OGs of the team, bro. Something we didn't have much of last year. In a while. Even when we had – the last time we had vets when Harden and them were here, they were pieces of shit. Like, yeah. <laughs> we got some real OGs on the team now. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're there to learn. They're there to play. Or they're there to teach. They're there to play. I'm happy with it because we called for vets and we got good ones. Yeah. Um, I applaud the Rockets. They went out. They had money to spend, so they had to spend it. Um, a lot of people, when they broke the bank, as we said in the video above, um, they went for Fred Van Vliet, which everybody kind of expected. They needed a point guard. They wanted a point guard to take those reins away from uh, Jalen Green and make sure that he just focuses on what he needs to do. Um, and it's a very short-term deal. Yeah. And with the new TV contract coming up, some of these contracts are going to be even better. Um on Fred Van Vliet, though, what do you what do you think he's going to bring to this team? Uh, I think he's going to help the offense because I think that he's capable of settling the offense if we get out of whack. But I think that like he's versatile in the sense that he can run some point guard and probably make Jabari, Tari, Sengun, Jay Sean, like those rollers a little bit better. But I also like the fact that he can play off the ball. He can run off screens for Sengun and shoot the three. You know what I mean? So he, he he's kind of got a good bag on him. So I just think he's going to help the team. Yeah, a lot of people looked at his stats from last year with Toronto, and they were like, oh, he struggled shooting. Oh, he did this. And it's like, yeah, but also being realistic, they just fired their coach, got a new coach. They, I mean, his best player beside him was Pascal Siakam, and we know how you feel about him. Um, <laughs> this is totally different team a totally different system and you could tell when he left he wanted kind of out of there already mm -hmm. change of scenery so change of scenery he gets to work with Jalen Green it's going to be a, a lot of people are sleeping on this backcourt um with Fred Van Vliet back there and I just I enjoy it um not only that is like there's so much versatility in the lineup in the sense like in in today's basketball like I hate the word but it's so true positionless basketball like what the hell do you do if a man Thompson's pushing the rock and he's like, I don't want to let Jalen shoot, but I definitely don't want to let Van Vliet shoot. You know what I mean? So what do I do? And yeah. that, that kind of excites me. Yeah. And he's, he may told Raphael, give me him. He wanted him. He knew what his system was going to need for a point guard and he got him. And I mean, a lot of people were mad that we got him i mean being realistic looking at the free agents that was probably one of the best things we could have done out i mean you got the and it's guard. also short term like if he does good it only makes it better because the team is good we learn yeah. how to play and his trade value skyrockets yep so it's good yeah i i'm i'm happy with fred van vliet being on the team um there's a lot to be excited about on this team and it, are you it happier of, for van vliet or Dylan Brooks. It was Fred Van Vliet. Then right. watching Dylan Brooks in the World Cup, seeing, I'm going to use the word a little bit more maturity, mm -hmm. going through all the BS of the Memphis Grizzlies, being the scapegoat that it was, and then getting a place, a team that wanted him, a coach that wanted him, and him being like, all right, I'm going to showcase some stuff. I get all the jokes aside of everybody laughing that, oh, he's the best defender in the world uh, right now of that. Dude got heart. That's what I'm saying. Like, the dude is going to give you effort. He's got heart. He may be he may open his mouth when he's not supposed to. His little puppy ass got chewed up by the big dog. But also, like, he – I think what he's going to be is how – is like the visual representation of how Ime wants to make his players accountable. Yeah. So like if you have like the Cam Whitmores and the Jalens and they're slacking on defense, it's like, no, do that. Like do what he does on defense. You know what I mean? Because yeah. Dylan's going to give it to you. So I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like when it comes to him, uh, he kind of reminds me of a Draymond Green situation a bit. Like I know who's going to be the vocal one on that bench. It's going to be him. And he has a right to be because he's not going to give 100 percent and tell you to, hey, you need to go play defense. And he's not doing the same thing. Like mm -hmm. and that's kind of what Draymond does. And every team needs that. Every team. I know there's going to be the guy who gives a hard foul. It's going to be him. The Marcus mm -hmm. Smart fouls, the the trash talking. And 
we always say every team wants that guy on there, but you don't want to go up against him. But that's who it is. And we needed that because you had guys last year like Tari a bit and a few others that were trying to be it. But no, nah, now, you know, Dylan Brooks, like, hate me. I don't give a shit. Like, well, I just think by. like Tari at his best is he's in the passing lanes. Yeah. Well, guess what? If Dylan's on the brook, uh, Dylan Brooks is on the ball, then you could get in the passing lane. Van yeah. Vliet could get in the passing lane. A man could get in the passing lane. I love that shit, bro. The same as with Jay, Jay Sean. Like, I don't know that you can necessarily call him a vet, but he is up there. He's a little older than the rest of those guys. But he knows. Like, like he's always been accountable to himself. So I think that that's good also. Like, I'm glad he's still on the team. Yeah, he's like a Swiss Army knife for us. Like, I, Bro, I talked to some fans. I know a lot of Rockets fans. And, so, like, he is a polarizing person because some people just love him and some people just hate him. And there's no in-between. Yeah. It, it's kind of weird because his contract is pretty much nothing. Nothing. The, the guy can guard multiple positions. He'll go out there, give you a, everything he has. His and, game's ugly yeah. sometimes, but it is what it is. He He's the guy that, like they always say, none of nothing that he does is going to show up in the stat sheet, but – you want him on your team. He's a guy, a team player that you want on your team. And so it it's perfect. I love it because he's in that, that position too, where it's like to some, he's going to be a veteran and to some, he's going to still be a youngster, even though he's old. Yeah. And that's to my, the next point it, you were talking about uh, Jeff Green and Boban a minute ago, but then as we were ending that and started this, I realized the real importance of those guys is they're the bridge between Ime and then vets and the young guys like mm-hmm. if those guys are too hard on the young guys and the young guys start bitching and the, you know what i'm saying or the young guys are being too cocky and or whatever i think that jeff green uncle jeff and bo bonner be like hold on you stop your shit you shut up and whatever and i just look for a, those guys are going to make the locker room more disciplined i think yeah yeah and it's it was good to get I mean, Boban is Boban. Dude's beloved by many fans in the NBA, so I love it. Um, he he created a lot of relationships, especially with Singoon and mm-hmm. with other people. I think him and Jacques Landell, which we'll get into, will be doing really good. But Jeff Green, coming off of a championship caliber team in Denver, knowing the system, I mean, he's played for us before, so he knows the city. But like you said, somebody that can – rally that group in it's a long season people don't realize 82 games you're with the same people for that many days you're gonna get tired of each other you're gonna get start arguing you're gonna complain and everything but you need people that are even outside of just the coaches mm-hmm. to get you riled in or if you have some you see something it's like we always say you have those players at those coaches at the end of the bench and that's kind yeah. of what they are and everything I feel about those two, Boban and Jeff Green, like I did when Case Keenum came back to the Texans. Yes. It's like, you're the OG, but I know I'm better than you, but I also know the importance of you. It's like when your mom spanks the shit out of your little brother and then you got to tell her that she was wrong and then tell him it's okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. (laughs) And I mean, and the good thing too is it helps with, especially for the rookies is it helps them learn the NBA life. Um, the, the difference of, you know, putting in the work. And, and you hear a lot, like, especially as a young team, where it seems like last year, I mean, it was a wash pretty much at, at one point. They were oh, going yeah. out, partying, doing this and that, whereas the teams that were competing were putting in the work at four in the morning, doing this and that. So I think the mindset is changing drastically to where these guys make sense now for this team. It, it reminds me a little bit of Boston – and how they came back up after the Garnett in that trade. What I yeah. mean by that is like, you had two young dudes, Jalen Brown and Tatum, but you were re- they really piggybacked off the success of the vets, like Horford, Isaiah Thomas, Marcus Moore, Morris. You know what I'm saying? Like it was some dudes who there who just let them young dudes hoop, and we got a good mixture. This is the first time in a long time we have that mixture, so I like it. Yeah. Um. Looking at. I want to say probably the most underrated signing we did was Jacques Landell. I definitely, for the amount of money that he got, I definitely see him getting minutes. And the dude, you said it earlier, like, and Jay Sean is like, his shit ain't pretty. Like, don't expect a dream shake or any step back. But the dude has a motor on him and he's not scared. 
yeah. to open it up. You know what I mean? Like he's going to give you 100% at all times. And we need that. He honestly is going to be the best paint defender we have. Yeah. Uh, the, if anybody is not, does not know who Jacques Landell is, go watch how he basically took DeAndre Aiden's spot in the playoffs last year and was like, you ain't getting this spot until they yep. make me get out of this game. Mm-hmm. And that was in key playoff games for the Phoenix Suns. Like, like he was getting a bulk of the minutes in their playoff series against the Clippers. And I was like, what yeah. the shit? You know what I mean? Like, this is the Clippers, and he's playing finishing games. Uh, like he's one of those guys where he probably will never get you 20, but you know what? When he sneaks up and gives you that 10 and 10 when you really need it, you'll thank you. Thank him yeah. for it. No, yeah, I man, I'm I'm kind of hyped. Like we did the rookies, we did the sophomores, we've done the the juniors, and now we're doing vets. And seeing the whole team as a whole, Mm -hmm. uh, seeing what Ime and Rafael have put together, I liken it to go back to like 2012, like right around the time we got Harden. At that time, we had a bunch of young dudes at the team. We we thought we were doing something. When we yeah. had like Omer Ashik and Jeremy Lin and those food. Oh yeah. It is it reminds me of that, but we actually have talent now. Yeah. It wasn't just like an insanity. Yeah, we have a we have we have a fucking Jabari and Atari, not a Chandler Parsons, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh man. Rockets fans, if you were not on the bandwagon, I say jump on right now. Um it's going to be a fun season. Don't get me wrong. There will be some growing pains. Um, don't don't expect them to come out and just drop 50 point win on like Denver or something like. But, but don't expect us to lose 15 games in a row anymore. Yeah, don't don't expect non-competitive games of, you know, coaching just looking lost and the players not knowing what to do out there. Like this is a totally different team coaching staff. He may literally said, he goes, I'm here to win. And mm-hmm. he's like, all the offense is cool and all, but I need defense. I need to stop people. And if anything, I'm not saying to look at us as Boston, but look at what he was able to do in Boston and how much it hurt when they lost him, that that's what you gained. He literally has one year of coaching experience and took the team to the final. Yeah. And they were – I don't care what nobody says. All those articles that were saying, oh, they were they were mad and upset when he left. Yeah, yeah, that's bullshit. All mm-hmm. the teams were were that wanted him and he picked the Rockets and everybody said, why? Everything we've said in these videos is why, because he put the pieces, he knew what pieces. He recognized what we had yeah. and what we can do with it. We're 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 good, bro. I'm telling you, we're gonna sniff a playoff, a play in spot, I think, and we'll be way more competitive team. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun one for sure. Rockets fans, if you like this stuff, like, subscribe, drop your comments. What do you think of the veterans? Are you still happy or are you upset with Dylan Brooks? I know some of you don't like him. Fine. Uh, are you still upset with the Fred Van Vliet thing? Um, let us know on it. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of Rockets content going forward. Check out the other videos, too. I'll put them up in the playlist above us. Other than that, we're out of here, Rockets fans. Only a few more weeks till preseason and everything. Later, people. Peace. How much I'm working for this I swear my dreams are too important